Hi team, I'm Fitz Kohler, your fitness expert and very noisy race announcer from fitness.com and welcome to the Fitness Show. Absolutely pumped about our conversation tonight because it's a topic I'm very interested in and I know it's going to be a tremendous resource for others who might need the help, right? They might need the guidance. A couple of weeks ago, we had a show on gastric bypass surgery and gastric sleeve and learned a whole bunch about that procedure. And you know what? It's it's something that a lot of people turn to. They haven't had success in the old fashioned way. And, you know, they turn their life around. And my guest lost cumulatively 400 pounds between three people, uh, which is extraordinary. And now they're living their best lives and, and they've adopted healthy habits and, and they're they're continuing to make progress. Along the way, my guest, Pierre Venant, he mentioned that he had just had excess skin removal surgery, which is always a hot topic. So I guide so many people towards uh, weight loss, small amounts and massive amounts. And, you know, the issue that comes from people who have lost 100 or 200 pounds, now they have saggy excess skin that did not go away when they lost the weight. And, uh, you know, it's a big deal. It's a big deal anytime you elect to have surgery. Um, but I know it's been rewarding for my two guests and they're absolutely thrilled to be able to share their stories. And we're going to get into the nitty gritty. Use your comments section wherever you are. If you have questions, if you have comments, please share them. Uh, and I'll make sure the guys have an opportunity to answer your questions. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing where this will go. Also, we have some videos that we're going to air with some photos. Some of the photos will show scars and things like that. So just just be aware if you're squeamish, look away for like 40 seconds while we air these videos. Uh, but here they come. Here's my guest. First guest, my high school friend, the best hugger at Coconut Creek High School, Mr. Pierre Venon. Hey, Pierre. Hey, Fitz. How you doing? Uh, thank you for having me on the show. And, you know, I'm always a pleasure talking to you and, you know, covering stuff like this with you. Yeah, well, you, you've come so far and it's been so fun to watch your progress over the year. And I appreciate how open you've been with it. So thanks for coming back two weeks later. And um, I'm going to bring on my next guest, Corey Sager, who was part of my audio podcast a couple of years ago. And that was fantastic. If you guys listen to the fitness show, go back to maybe the, I think you were part of the first 30 episodes, but welcome, Corey. Hi, uh, thanks for having me as well. It's a pleasure. I always enjoy any time I can collaborate with you. Oh, you're you're such a doll. So I, I bragged about Pierre's hugs in high school, and Corey and I met at the Encinitas Half Marathon in 2017, and you came dressed up like a rainbow, and I fell in love really quickly, and you've been a delightful friend to have over the years. But I'm super bummed. You've left San Diego, and now you're in Ohio. I am. I'm in Columbus, but don't ever be bummed because I'll never be in one place uh, forever. I'm always on the go. I like to tell people I'm a gypsy. I like that. <laughs> well, I, I behave like one professionally. So as long as you come and find me at a race near you, that'll make me happy. Okay. Absolutely. And then uh, before we get started uh, and be before we start talking about weight and so forth, I want to ask you guys a few random questions uh, just to get to know you so people can get to know who you are. So, Pierre, tell me what you're really, really bad at. What I'm really, really bad at, I'm really bad at cooking. Okay. You know, and that's something that, <laughs> you know, I can grill pretty decent and I've been forcing myself to cook more. And like on my Instagram and stuff like that, I've been trying to cook little meals here and there. But it took me a long time to get some decent meals together, especially after my surgery and trying to focus on eating right and eating healthy. So cooking is not my strong suit. Okay. And what about you, Corey? What are you really bad at? Oh, good question. I would say I'm really uncoordinated. Thank goodness I can run in a straight line. Um, I would say like basketball, like <laughs> I, <laughs> as, as tall as I am, uh, people always ask me if I play basketball and it's like, no, I can't dribble between my legs to save my life. So I play sports. You? I'm six, six. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I laying down or laying down on the couch, you can't tell, but yeah. Pierre, how tall are you? I'm about six three. Oh wow, that's some good height on you guys. I'm only five. Two tall people. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my next question, I'm going to go to you first, Corey. Uh, what is your go-to karaoke song? And you can't tell me you don't have one. You have to pick a song. Oh, I love karaoke. Any chance I can go and sing, I will. Um, I would say probably Sandy from Greece with John Travolta. Oh, <laughs> that's very sweet. Yeah. Or Take On Me by AHA, but that's uh, that's more of like a, had a few drinks and feeling a little uh, ambitious and fun. Well, great choices and RIP Olivia Newton-John. Exactly. What a, what a this week. Mm. <sighs> what a trooper she was uh, and, and fighting breast cancer and, and working so hard with her cancer center to help find a cure. So I appreciate her. She was a, a blessing to us all. Pierre, your karaoke uh -huh. song. I, I hate to admit it, but it's uh, a song that I sing a lot for some reason. It's Elvis Presley. Um, oh, no, I can't if, you say, if you say Can't Help Falling in Love, that was going to be my other one. If I can't help falling yep. <laughs> with yep. you. Yeah. That's it. That's my other one. That's so and funny. I, yeah, and I just saw the movie the other day, so it was awesome to watch that, you know, as a kid growing up, watching all the Elvis movies and stuff like that and hearing them sing. For some reason, that song always stuck in my head and I just, when I get bored, I just kind of start singing it to myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, I need to switch it up a little bit. It, it's no. a powerful song. No, it is. And the movie was incredible. I loved it. No, it definitely was a great movie. Great movie. Have you seen it, Corey? No. <laughs> gotcha. I, just know the, I just know the song because I, I think I just heard somebody singing at karaoke one night. And I'm like, oh, this sounds like it's got a really good you know, melody to it. And um, some low notes. I love if it, a song has lower, deeper, like bass tones. So I actually sing bass when I am in like choruses. So, okay. well, it's iconic. It's an iconic song. So, and what a lucky lady or man to have you sing it to them, right? <laughs> a, a romantic song. All right. So, Corey, um, let's talk about just briefly give us the Reader's Digest version of your weight loss, where you were and um, what it was like being overweight, when you decided to take it off, how you did it and where you are now. Before oh, gosh, the Reader's Digest. Let's, yeah. see how, let's see how short I can make it. Um, was heavy pretty much my entire childhood. Um, went through college, gained even more weight. Uh, was in my last year of school, my first uh, career. And I just bought a house. I was watching The Biggest Loser one night. And I was just watching Jillian rip on these people like eight hours in the gym. And I'm sitting there eating a pint of Ben & Jerry's as I'm watching it, thinking, you know, this is what I do. Um, and there was just like a, a moment where somebody got really emotional and broke down. And I put my pint down and I started crying. And I was just like, I'm this person. And I need to do something about it. So... Um, I started to do little bit by little bit of running. Like I would try and run for maybe a minute and then walk a minute. So I did like the couch to 5k, very like structured like that. I had the app on my phone. Actually, I remember I had Nike too. And they, I don't know if you remember back in the day, they had like the little, uh, you could post your run to Facebook and if people liked it, it would cheer in your ear while you were running. Cute. No. And it was really cool. And I just remember anytime I'd hear a cheer, I was just like, there are people there that see me out here doing this. And it just, it was so much motivation. And so I went into 2012, uh, I had a really uh, traumatic experience on New Year's Eve, uh, went out with friends. I was, I bought a shirt. I don't know if you saw my post last year, but I posted all about it. Um, I bought a shirt uh, for the evening. You know, everybody gets really dressed up and just wants to show off. And so I'm in the hotel room and I'm taking selfies of myself like any millennial would do <laughs> and I cannot get a photo at 50 photos and I cannot get one I'm like this looks good like and I just remember looking at myself in the mirror and I broke down bawling my eyes out because I could just see my you know my shirt was like overflow like my love handles were overflowing off the sides and I was just I was I was just absolutely defeated so I went and drank myself into a blackout that night I don't remember anything and the next day I woke up and my friends told me you know uh, I was an embarrassment, frankly, and I needed to get my life together because I was so drunk. I ripped all the stuff off the hotel room uh, wall, like all the shelves. And it was my wake up call. After that, I went back home to Tiffin at the time where I lived. 
and I got a gym membership and I just said, I'm doing this. I'm going to lose 60 pounds and run a 5k. Um, and by the end of the year, you know, I had lost 85 and I ran a half marathon and several 5k's and ever since then, it's just stuck with me running. It's just been my, my rock. I am such a better person because I found running. And so that's what I do now. I run and I try, you know, don't eat the healthiest always, but I really do. And I just, I just try to be better than I was yesterday. I, it's constantly an involvement. So that's my nutshell. My reader's digest took a little long, but um, there's so much more I could say, but. No, that's, that's, that's a, a really good reader's digest version. I know a lot of people will resonate with that as, um, you know, where, when do you hit the wall? When, when do you decide I can no longer remain as is? And it's interesting, you know, as I counsel people and guide them towards fitness, you know, people don't want it. It doesn't matter how simple the exact formula for weight loss is. It doesn't matter if they don't want it, they're not going to change. They need to decide, put their foot down is I can no longer stomach myself as I am today. And then they make progress. And so congratulations on that horrific new year's. It really was a good, good thing. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, um, I don't know, uh, blessing in disguise. You know, you have to have that rock bottom moment. And once you hit that rock bottom, it's up to you to decide where you go from there. And I love how you said that if somebody doesn't want it, they're not going to get it. Mm -hmm. I wanted it so bad. And I, and I fought for it and I sacrificed and it was, it was so worth it. It's, it's so worth it. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I see that you have a good life. I don't think you'd have it without the, those changes you made. For sure. Now, Pierre, same thing. What was it like how being overweight and how did you make the change? I mean, uh, for me, I, I was fortunate enough to where I really didn't gain a lot of weight until later in life as I got older. And, um, you know, for most of my high school, I was on a football team. I was always in shape. And then when I left high school, I went to college for a little bit, played some high school, uh, college football, didn't pan out the way I wanted it, came back home, started working in nightclubs. So for the most part, I was always a muscular jack dude. My body was my temple and worked out and whatever, whatever. Until, you know, I don't know if you know, um, like in my 20s, I, I got shot um, one night working as a bouncer. You got shot? I got shot, yeah. And, oh. um, you know, got shot through my stomach. Uh, my stomach went through my lungs, went through my arm, went through my wrist, and went through my leg, broke the bone in my leg. And, you know, I was in a wheelchair for like a year or so. And I, I guess at that point in time, I started to gain weight, you know. But then as an athlete and stuff like that, I would gain weight and lose weight gain weight and lose weight and then it wasn't until like I guess I got into my 30s where kind of balanced work life and trying to be successful and started working so much that I didn't work out as much and then next thing you know you know hurt my back and then next thing you know I started putting on more weight then I tried to lose weight but my back would hurt the next thing you know I developed sleep apnea and then it got even harder for me to lose weight. This kept on gaining weight, you know. And now I'm like working, you know, moving up in my job, try to be successful. Um, I had my son um, around when I was like 20, 29. So now I'm like working like two jobs and not eating right. Um, so it just started blowing up. And I went from like, I used to stay right around 250 to 285, but like reasonably muscular. And then I went from 285 up to 380, probably even more because it got to a point where I stopped weighing myself. It was just like, all right, you're wearing five XL shirts, you're wearing size 50 pants and stuff like that. And now you're developing all these medical conditions, sleep apnea. Um, my, uh, my heart went to AFib. So I was doing, you know, blood thinners. I was doing the um, sleep apnea machine. I was taking blood pressure medicine. I was taking cholesterol medicine. I felt like I was spending like two, $300 a month on medicines because of my weight. And Things really got serious for me when I went out to dinner with some friends and I almost passed out. They had to rush me in the middle of dinner to the hospital. My blood pressure was like 200 something over. God knows, I can't remember what the number was. And at that point in time, I was saying to myself, okay, yeah, Pierre, um, no matter how much you tried to gain, you know, lose the weight. Because I, I tell people, you know, I'm not one of those people that and I complain and say, oh, I'm heavy and I don't do anything about it because I, I think I've done Tough mutters weighing 300 plus pounds. I've done three of them weighing over 300 pounds. I've done races and 5Ks and it was the same cycle of 
you know, situation where it just kept on coming back because of injury or because of my medical condition. And I said to myself, I need to make a change that's going to permanently get me to where I want to go. I already know that I, I love to work out. I know I love to be active. I just need a little helping hand. And that's when I decided in uh, February of 2018 to get the gastric bypass surgery. Um, when I started the program, was, I was right, right at 380. Um, then I lost some weight. And by the time the surgery came around, I got down to 335. Um, and then after I had the surgery, I went from 335 all the way down to about 220, 215. And then... Um, you know, this worked out again. And now working out is like the staple of my life. I work out five, six days a week. I've done probably over 50, maybe even 105 Ks over the last three, four years since my surgery. Um, I've done a couple of duathlons. And one of my proudest moments is um, I did a physique competition where I walked the stage, you know, and I dropped down to 205, you know, under 5% body fat. So long story short, you know, Gaining the weight was very stressful for me. Um, maintaining, um, so to drive me to make the decision to have gastric bypass surgery, to, to do something that's really gonna affect me and help me to get to that situation and get rid of that situation. And now since then, no medical issues, no more blood pressure medicine, no more you know heart medicine, no more blood thinners. I'm just trying to live a better life now. It's incredible. And you know, one of the things I think about when I hear both of you talk is, you know, the overweight person out there saying, but running a 5k is hard or eating that way is hard or whatever, whatever it is, it's hard, but it sounds like being morbidly obese was really hard. No, you definitely. Gotta ch choose your hard. Yeah. It's a totally different type of hard because, um, you know, like running a 5k is only hard for 30 minutes, like being morbidly obese. It's every day you wake up and you just, you feel awful. And, and it's like you're con it's like you're constantly running marathon because your body is not conditioned and you're just you're you're never you're never feeling good about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I was gonna say, yeah, like I remember being overweight and with sleep apnea, you know, I barely slept. And I drive forty five minutes home from work every day. So I would eat a candy bar just to stay awake enough so that way I didn't run off the road because I was so sleepy because I didn't sleep enough throughout the day or throughout the night because of my sleep apnea and stuff. So I, once again, I'd rather be you know, in shape working out than being overweight and then never knowing if I'm going to die. The next step I take is going to be the last step I take. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, uh, it's powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. So you guys, you made the moves and you lost all the weight and then uh, you were left with some excess skin. And so when did that become an issue and how much of an issue was it, Corey? Um, I guess at first it wasn't because I was just so excited to lose weight. I was so like, I'm in a totally different body and I'm active. And, and for a while, I was just kind of occupied with the things that I was doing to, to the routine I had. Um, but then at some point you plateau and you're just like, okay, I have literally am down to a BMI of 20, like I'm, I'm healthy. And then you see it. And then every day, you know, I would think, I think the first time I really noticed it was probably after like five years of losing the weight and keeping it off. Um, and I would go through like yo-yoing. It would be like one, one year I might be 198 pounds and another I'd be like 215. Sometimes I get up to 220 during COVID. I got up to almost 225, but I never let myself get like just fall off the, the wagon completely. And so with the yo-yoing, um, I'm sure it didn't help, but I'd say probably five years in, I was like, okay, I need to, I need to look into either like maybe going to the gym and lifting weights to, cause they, there are people that say you can like bulk and lean cut and all that stuff. And I didn't really understand it. Running was my passion. So I wasn't going to like sacrifice my running in a sense, like being competitive and like pushing myself in my running to put on 20 pounds of what do they call it? Dirty bulking or something. And then you cut or something like that to get more lean overall. So anyways, um, yeah, five years. And then I kept putting it off and putting it off. Um, there was times in my head where I was like, I wasn't good enough to get the excess skin removed. Like I felt like that was something that 
somebody that did more than I did deserve somebody who lost 250 pounds and, you know, was who, who had some kind of horrible genetic condition. Like, thankfully, even though I was heavy, I was relatively healthy. Like I didn't never, I never got diabetes. I never had any kind of like heart problems. So I guess I just didn't think I was worth it enough. And then, uh, Finally, you know, as Pierre did, you know, I took, I, I bit the bullet and I, I took the leap and it's been the best decision of my life. I truly, oh, go ahead. <laughs> what body part were, was most bothersome? Where was the saggy skin? Um, it, on my abdomen. I okay. mean, I, the, eventually it got like kind of traumatizing. I would wake up in the morning and I would see like the excess skin and I would tuck when I would go for a run, I like to run shirtless, regardless of if I was going to have, you know, excess skin or not. Uh, I just remember the truffle shuffle and it was just, it was daunting every time I'd run and stuff would jump up and down. And so I would tuck my excess skin under my waistband. Okay. So it looked like I had a flat stomach and I do this every single day of my life. Even when I would, it almost just became like second nature, like before I go out with friends to the bars and things like that. It was just something that I did. And man, after a while, you get tired of it. Yeah. It just, it wears you down. And it's all you think about all the times I would look in a mirror when I'm trying on clothes or I like, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm a proud gay man and in our community, vanity is, it runs amok. And yeah. it was like, there was always that fear of like, oh, my abdomen is not flat. And so nobody's going to want me. And yeah, it was a psychological body, uh, body dysmorphic kind of thing. So Corey, I've never heard truffle shuffle before. <laughs> uh, it's what's the Goonies or whatever, where the guy's like running and his, his, you know, his skin is bouncing up and down. So if you think about all the excess skin and you're running, uh, gravity is definitely going to play a little bit of a part, but you're going to have it bouncing up and down. It's called the truffle shuffle. Cause right. I, Thankfully, I, I wouldn't say I shuffled, um, but, you know. Truffle shuffle. Tr truffle shuffle, yeah. Got it, got it. And Pierre, uh, tell us how the skin affected your life and, wh and when did you pull the trigger? When, what made you pull the trigger on getting this removed? I mean, for me, um, it was like one of those things where, you know, body dysmorphia is a big thing in the uh, gastric bypass, bariatric surgery thing, because no matter how much you lose or how good you look, you always feel like you're not looking your best or doing your best. And after putting in the hard work and uh, trying to achieve your goals, you, you always look down and you, you see that excess skin. Um, I know when it comes to the, the bariatric community, everybody's skin is different. It depends on your age, how big you were, how long you were big, and you're going to see different levels of skin. You know, I was fortunate enough because like I said, I worked out most of my life. I was always in shape and I've you know gained a lot of the weight latter part of my life so the amount of skin that I had wasn't as bad as some of the people I saw on some of these um Instagram posts or YouTube posts and and I was fortunate in that aspect but one of the biggest things that I focused on knowing that skin was going to be an issue was you know working out you know you 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 work out and it may not cure your problem but it definitely can help you maintain a better look in your your weight loss and for me, I've never had the excess skin under my arm. I never had excess um, skin in my, my chest area. Most of my weight was around my love handles and my front part of my, my ab abdomen area. So no matter how much I worked out, how much weight I lost, you would always see the excess skin. And I always felt like if I went through this challenge, I needed some, you know, I wanted to look the ultimate best to, for people to be like, you know, oh, you had the surgery, but you're still you know, you still look fat or you still have loose skin, so it doesn't look good. It, uh, and, you know, people always ask, oh, that's so disgusting and stuff like that. So for me, I, you know, I, like I said, I did a physique competition. Um, I think it was April of last year and I got down to 205 and I was under 5% body fat. Wow. And, but you still could see the excess skin at the lower part of my abdomen. abdomen. But once again, I was fortunate enough compared to other people, but I walked the stage in front of 600 people with my shirt off and that's something I don't even do around my family. You know, um, I keep my shirt on and my friends would look at me and be like, Pierre, 
you're in best shape compared to any of us here because I walked around with muscles. I was, you know, I was, but I always was concerned about my abdomen area to where, you know, I, in a tank top, I look like, you know, a muscle man. Everybody's like, wow, you look awesome. But they didn't realize the same scenario with Corey, I would tuck my, my the excess skin or I'd buy shorts that would kind of rise up a little bit. So that way you couldn't see the bulge of the skin around my abdomen, the bulge around my love handles. And if you look at a lot of my Instagram posts or my, um, uh, you know, Facebook, people are like, man, you like wearing a vest a lot, you know, and I have like about like 20 different vests. And I'd like tell people the vest is the best thing to do because I can wear a dress shirt and have it super tight on my arms or sleeveless. And you can see my chest, you can see my arms, but then I would wear a wider vest. So that way you couldn't see my love handles. You couldn't see my stomach. Right. So I had surgery, you know, like I said, four years ago. And my goal was to try to get in the best shape of my life and then kind of see where I was at. Um, you know, I, I was fortunate, fortunate enough to meet a wonderful girlfriend and we've been together for like four years. And she looks at me every day and says, you're crazy. You, your body is phenomenal. You, you, you look great. You know, you're 50 years old and there's guys right now who are 50 and would wish to look the way you look. But she knows at the same time, deep down in my mind, I always think about it. She knows that when I go places, I never take my shirt off. When we go to the beach or we go to like pool parties, I never take my shirt off. I wear tank tops. I wear, you know, dressy outfits, but I always make sure they, they sit, sit a certain way on me. So after four years and, you know, you, you go up and down in weight when you, you know, you try to figure out how your body's going to end up after surgery and working out. I told myself, you know, I'm going to wait at least four to five years to see where I end up. And and then the true test was when I did the physique competition. And I you know, I said I was down at 205, under 5% body fat. And here it is. You still see the skin. It wasn't as bad, but you still saw it. And I said to myself, you know what? I want to do another competition again in the future. I want to do this competition and I want to wear my shorts below my belly button. I want to walk the stage. I want to be proud. I want to show the people all the hard work I'm doing because I'm going to the gym like five six days a week, putting in an hour and a half, two hours, running all these five Ks, but yet I'm still afraid or ashamed to walk around with my shirt off. So that was the decision that helped me to say, you know what, you know, save some money up, did the research, talked to different doctors. I, I think I met with like five different plastic surgeons, um, talked about different procedures would, would, would work best for me and, you know, my recovery time and everything. And that's when I decided June of this year, June 23rd, is when I had the high tension lateral tummy tuck and then um, liposuction of my flanked area, love handles, as everyone calls them. So, uh, A, thank you both for your honesty. I think it's really refreshing. And while I was trying to think of what, which one of my female friends had the surgery, I'm really really grateful it's just you two guys here tonight because i think it's interesting um the similarities you have i think tucking the excess skin is just fascinating and also heartbreaking i could see how that would be just a really painful thing to have to do emotionally um the vest pierre brilliant yeah <laughs> absolutely brilliant did you guys try so we see things sold as like the the men's like squeezy tees or I hate to call them girdles. I don't know what else to call them. Did you use other products to try and manage this stuff? Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I use a lot of waist trainers. I would use a lot of waist trainers when I work out or, um, and then I would always buy those, that sweet sweat stuff to put on my abdomen while I worked out to see if I could target that area to lose fat or lose the skin. Um, they help, but they didn't get away. I take away the situation. And I went and bought a bunch of um, like, I forgot what they're called. They're like super tight Under Armour shirts, like almost like Under Armour, where it's like almost like a, a girdle shirt. Yeah. So if I was wearing certain dress shirts, I'd wear that super tight, small, you know, I, I had to suck in my breath, throw it on, and then hope I didn't pass out within the first minute or two until my body got used to it. <laughs> and, you know, I tried, I, I got like about 10 of those shirts and sitting in my closet. And every time I'd go out, I would look in the mirror and say, okay, uh oh, this shirt is not tight enough. So let me put another, buy, take one out of a brand new pack and put another one on that was tight enough. So then that way I kept my love handles in my extra skin in bay. Wow. Corey, what about you? 
It's so funny you mentioned that like sweat elite or whatever it was called. You're taking sweet me sweat. back because sweet sweat. Because I remember I bought that like that binder and the thing, and it would it would make that it would make your abdomen sweat because it had like that special thing. Uh, did it work? I don't think so. I think no. it was a little bit of a gimmick. And so, yeah, just just yeah. anyone's watching that stuff doesn't work. The only way yeah. to burn fat is by burning fat or consuming yeah. fewer calories. But I understand why you took a shot on that out of desperation. Absolutely, you're just like. I, you know, getting desperate and just like, I, I got to try anything and everything. Mm -hmm. You're like, you're just, you're rummaging for all the options. Um, but for me, no, not really. I, I, I was lucky that, I mean, I got pretty, pretty thin, except for the excess skin and, you know, the stretch marks on my abdomen. Like you, I didn't really have them on my arms. I have them on the back a little bit. They call them like your bat wings. But um, that, I, I don't really care about that. Nobody's looking at the back of my arms. And if they are, it's because they're behind me in a race. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I guess I just, I never, I just tucked my, I was lucky enough in the sense, and gosh, it's sad to say I was lucky enough to tuck my, you know, my excess skin under my belt band and be okay with it. Um, but I never had to like buy compression, stuff like that. I, and I didn't like it anyways, because it made me look like a pear because of the way my, my, I'm like an ectomorph. And so the way that my body is just designed, I'm all limbs and very tiny torso. Um, so I would look, if you squeeze, if you squeeze my center, I would literally look like uh, an hourglass. Okay. So it almost would look worse in a sense. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to go to your videos. You each have about 60 seconds. Pierre, we're going to start at your before and after photos for your weight, and then we're going to move to your surgical photos. So whatever you want to tell us as we go through this, again, it's about 60 seconds. Anyone who's watching know that there's going to be a couple of pictures of scars. So if you're squeamish, look away. Um, but I don't think any of it is gory at all and i am squeamish i looked at it and i didn't have any problems so um pierre yep that's me at my heaviest 380 and then me down to about like 225 380 and i think in this picture i'm like maybe 215 and lean and stuff like Damn, that look at those arms <laughs> yeah, right? so my arms are, is like my best asset and then this is the <laughs> infamous uh best picture you know with the yeah. red vest and then this is me. Um, I think I, this was right after I had surgery. And then you can see the loose skin. Mm -hmm. um, if you can go back one, Fitz, I don't know if you can. Oh, I can't, but I can replay it again another time. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say, because when I lost, see, I, I'm, I'm like at 225. And you can see the excess skin between me working out and not working out. And this is right before I had the surgery. Wow. You can see the skin and um, the side, my love handle's there. Um, and this mm -hmm. is right after the surgery. I'm, my stomach is still puffy. But you can see the, the new belly button. Um, you okay. see the scar. And I'm, you know, I don't see the love handles. The excess skin is gone. And also you see that my abs are starting to start to show again. And then you don't see no love handles and no excess skin. This is the famous, you know, uh, compression garment that I had to wear for a month straight, you know. And I'm still wearing one now. I have to wear it for 12 weeks. And, you know, uh, to keep the swelling down, to help with the, um, the blood to go. Because I had um, the, with the drainage. So you have to wear the compression suit like 24 hours a day. The only time to keep it off is to shower the first month or so. And then after the first month or so, you can wear it for like 12 hours a week, uh, a day. But it's like the worst thing ever. You know, <laughs> trying to go to the bathroom in public is like, oh, my gosh. I basically have to get completely naked to take my shirt off, take my pants off, pull this thing all the way down. Because this thing is tight. So mm -hmm. tight that like I have to breathe or like my girlfriend has to help me like pull it up the first couple of times because you're so sore and sensitive that you can't even bend down to really pull it all the way up. And then it just kind of helps you to just kind of, you know, get there and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but my arms are like my best asset. That's why I'm always wearing tank tops. I look I like, man, you look super sexy. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, you won't give it. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Look at that photo on and, the left. And then this oh picture right gosh. here, this is when I'm down to 205, and you can see the excess skin all the way down at the beginning yeah. of it. So that's where I had the issues. Like, I'm saying to myself, man, I went from, like, 225 to 205, you know, under 5% body fat, and I still can't get rid of that skin, you know? This is a picture of me from before working out and after working out. So, 
You, you that, know what I what I really respect is this is the time where you I I fully support taking action like this because you're a guy who has gone all the way himself. You've done everything right. You've done everything in the gym. You know, you've been out on the roads running. You've been watching what you put in your mouth. You've done everything. And then there's this thing you can't control. There's no way to exer exercise off excess skin. There's no cream that you can put on to remove excess skin. You are literally at your point B bodybuilding competition, had this, you, the surgery was the right move for you. Yeah. It was like the final icing on the cake, you know, saying, okay, you put in the work, you did the things you need to do. And once again, like I said, my girlfriend loves me to death. And she was like, baby, you're the sexiest, you know, 50 guy, you know, guys half your age would love to look the way you do. Yeah. My friends, when they see me and I walk around in a tank top, like they're like, bro, girls are breaking their necks just to watch you walk by and looking at your arms. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I would have like random strangers come up to me and grab my arm and my chest and ask me for workout tips. But here at all that time is happening, people walking up to me asking me how to work out and do all these things. I'm still won't take my shirt off at a pool party, you know. So it's like, ah, it, I just it, it's like that thing to say now, you know, once I completely healed up, like I said, I just had surgery in June. You know, my goal is to start training again, wait for the swelling to go down, and then to do another physique competition. And this time I'll be over, I'll be 50. So now I'm going to get into 50 and older categories. I'll be the young guy of the old guys and walk the stage with my shirt completely off and my shorts under my belly button to let everybody see um, the, the work I put in. Kira, that's going to be so liberating. I just want yeah. you to know that I, I'm you. a little further ahead. I had my surgery in April. And right. Corey, yep, Corey, yeah. I'm going to play your video. So you tell okay, okay. Whatever, you keep going. Sure. Yeah, that was 20, I think 2010, 2009. Um, that was at a gay pride picnic in 2010. I, I hate seeing these photos. That was my junior year going in in college. And that was me a few weeks ago. This is me in my new body about a month ago. Um, so there's before surgery or that's after surgery, right after you can see the puffiness. There's my, you know, my excess skin. You can see how it just hangs over the bottom of that. <laughs> there's my compression girdle. But I, I always said I was, uh, my Victorian lady girdle. That's my, that's after the surgery. I thought they did a phenomenal job. I looked at that and I was just like, wow, this is going to look so good. And what's funny is I look at that. I look even better than I than I could ever imagine. I'm just blown away by just how much confidence this has given me. And just to feel like you are in the body that, sorry, I'm gonna get emotional. To, to, to be in the body that you just always dreamed that you should be in, like to actually relate to the body that you, you, you think you need to be in. Like the work you put in, Pierre, it's, it's so liberating when you finally get to experience that to not be confined by something that poor choices and uh, uh unfortunately uh a hatred of yourself a loathing of yourself took you to there so to see the you know the just the change is just it's made it all so worth it i'm really happy for you both and really sweet thank you Corey. <laughs> thank you it's hard sometimes not to get emotional when you're talking to people about the situation and you know no one understands it like you know i could talk to Corey and he understands what i'm going through and yeah. when you talk to someone Absolutely. who has not to do it they don't understand the struggle and once again like i said when i walk around with a tank top and shorts and i'm walking around my friends are like what the hell are you talking about we don't see any excess skin you know and it's like but in your mind they don't see me when I take my shirt off. They don't see me when I look in the mirror. They don't see the fact that, you know, I'm at the gym and I'm, you know, putting waist trainers. I'm doing this, you know, I'm doing that. It, it's it's not something that you can explain easily unless someone's been through that process. And, you know, going through all the, you know, five, five days a week, I'm in the gym. My girlfriend tells you 4.30, I'm up. I'm out the door by 4.45. I'm at the gym by like 5.15. And I'm in there until like 7.30 and I'm out the door. And, you, and I say to myself, man, I'm doing all this. I'm eating right. I'm, I'm watching my proteins. I'm, I keep my carbs low. I'm, I, I minimize my liquor. And yet I still have this skin and I'm afraid, you know, to let people see it. You know, my girlfriend, my son, 
are the only two people who see me with my shirt off. Not even my mom, my you know, my brothers, or no one else sees it because I'm I was I'm not gonna say ashamed, but just was afraid to you know reveal it to everybody because for them they see this muscle guy, this you know, and, and you know me fits. I've always been like this larger than life, Mr. Party guy, go out, you know, work in nightclubs. I was a bouncer, I did this, I you know, and my friends see me as that guy, but deep down I'm like man, I'm, I'm afraid to show myself to people and see the uh, the skin. And it's, you shouldn't be that way because you should be proud that you lost the weight and you're healthy and you're running. Because, you know, once again, my friends are like, you're doing more than, we're like 30 years old and we can't even keep up with you running. Yeah. You don't work out the way you work out. We don't even eat the way you would eat. But, you know, in your mind, you, it's that body dysmorphia. You, you just want to look good for yourself. And, you know, you do it for, like I said, I don't do it for no one else. I do it for myself, you know. So we've got a few great comments. One of uh, a couple of my favorite runner guys, other guys. This is Tim Patton. Feels good to look in the mirror, doesn't it? Be proud. You've earned that. He's right. Thank you, Tim. And then Sean Matlock, one of our San Diego runners. Both look amazing. Thank you for sharing your stories. Yeah, Sean is, Sean's a prince. So tell us, you decide to have the skin removal surgery, you have to find a surgeon, you have to, uh, I mean, what does it cost? What are the things up front that you have to make big decisions on? Corey? Uh, for me, cost is obviously always a thing. Uh, it, uh, and honestly, it was like, when am I going to get the opportunity where I can take the time off that you're going to need to heal and things like that? And I, you know, the stars aligned. I, I, if my friend Ron is listening to this, my friend Ron owns a condo in Puerto Vallarta and I uh, always go on my birthday in April. Uh, and so the way that it worked out was I knew my contract in Palm Springs was ending at the, the first week of April. And so I was going to go to Puerto Vallarta regardless. And so I realized because I'm a traveling physical therapist assistant, I don't, the next job I go to is when I'm ready. So I wasn't, I didn't have work obligations. So I said, Hey, I'm thinking of getting this excess skin removal. Um, I've been wanting to do it for years. Um, I know you have a condo. Uh, could I, could I get the surgery down there and stay and heal there? Uh, and he graciously offered to let me stay in his condo. And so I had literally a, a Disney film of like weight loss, or of uh, skin removal surgery. Everything went really well. I got to recover in beautiful Puerto Vallarta. I paid way less than I would have paid in the US. Yeah. Um, uh, and my surgeon was very, I mean, they were just very knowledgeable and they made me feel very at ease. I remember the day before um, I had the surgery, I was just so anxious and so scared. And I just, I told myself, you've come this far, you've paid the deposit. <laughs> So you're just going to do it and it's going to be wonderful. You're going to be so happy. Uh, and, and I am. And so a Mexican surgeon in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And what was, can and, I ask what the price was? Uh, I paid a little over six grand. Okay. Okay. What, what were the prices you found in the States? Uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 K. Wow. That's a big, yeah. Difference. It's a third of the price. Okay. Um, and I want people to know this. This is, I tell everybody this. Do not be afraid to go down. Do your research, but do not be afraid to go to Mexico. Mexico has state-of-the-art equipment. My entire, I, I went to the CMQ hospital and I was treated like an absolute prince or a queen, you know, because <laughs> I'm a queen. I remember after the surgery, I was getting ready to go to bed that night and the nurse came in and she's like, can I get you anything else? And I said, could you make me a glass of chocolate milk? And this nurse went and made me a glass of chocolate milk and brought it back to me. And I'm like, in the US, you would have never gotten that or they would have charged you $2,000 for it. Perhaps. But uh, and my room was like 450 square foot, like uh, mm -hmm. sweet. Like it was just absolutely immaculate. Um, so to anybody that's listening, if cost is a factor, if you want a little vacay, I'm telling you, go to Mexico, Dr. Um, Juan Hildalgo at uh, weight loss surgery team, Puerto Vallarta. So they do their surgery at the CMQ hospital on Francisco Villa. And it was, it was just perfect. It was so good. 
That's precise. Thank you. That, yeah. was, that was great. And what about you, Pierre? Um, for me, I, my overall surgery cost about close to 12K. Okay. And um, and that's the one thing with the, the surgery, you know, like if you t listen, like, because I'm in a bunch of bariatric groups on Facebook. And, you know, some, I think one of them has like 80,000 members and one has like 75,000 members. So there's a lot of people in them. And I mean, like maybe like 10 different groups and stuff like that. And Mexico is one of the, you know, preferred location. And you see a lot more people going there for bariatric surgery and for the skin removal because it's a fraction of the cost here. Um, I decided to have my surgery here in Orlando. Um, I met with, I want to say five different plastic surgeons. Um, and I picked it not just under price. I picked it based on the surgeon's personality and experience. So I went with Dr. Kenrick Spencer or Kenrick Spence at Hillcrest Plastic Surgery. Um, his mannerism, the way he explained the process to me, the surgery, the way the the young ladies or nurses would treated me and being nice. And every time I go there, they, you know, I would smile. Um, and based on my health and situation, I was able to do the surgery at his facilities. So if I did it at the hospital, it would have been a lot more because they would have charged, the hospital would have charged me for their facilities like that. So because I was at his location, I was able to get the uh, tummy tuck and the lipo on my sides. And it was $12,000. If I would have went to the hospital, I would have been close to like 20,000 with the hospital fees and everything in it. And that's one thing with two with this plastic surgery for people who lose a lot of weight. You know, you hear different surgery. There's a, you know, the full 360, um, the people who have the, like the arm skin, the guys who have excess um, boob skin, you know, me, I just put um, chest muscle on. So that way you don't, you, you don't see mine. The only time you really see it, if I flex, you can see like a little excess skin right under that part. But um, the surgery itself, it, it, it was very nervous. I was scared. Um but I knew that it was the right decision for me. And I picked the right doctor after meeting with five other doctors and go over the process. Um, you know, I, I thought about doing the full 360 to where they pull the skin completely around. So your backside and stuff like that. But, I, you know, with work, I only could take so much time off. And, you know, I'm an uh, operation manager for or a di uh, director of operations for a finance company. So I didn't want to too many time off. And um, but I was happy with the procedure I had. The doctor took off a massive amount of skin, made it very tight, lipoed a lot of um excess fat on the sides and stuff like that. And I think I took about 10 days off from work and was in, but I sit at a desk at work. So I was able to go back to work and comfortably because I'm not lifting. I'm not doing anything strenuous, but if, if you're doing something strenuous or your job requires you to lift and then definitely you're going to need more time before you can go back to work. So on a scale of one to 10 for both of you, what was the pain, the worst pain you had during the whole process, 10 being the worst. I would say it wasn't pain. It was just constant discomfort, like trying yeah. to get comfortable sleeping. Like my friend said I should rent a recliner. And my gosh, if I could go back, I would have rented a recliner because I was getting really crafty. I took my suitcase and plastic bags of pillows and I propped it up on my suitcase. And then because I was obviously in Mexico, so <laughs> I had a suitcase. <laughs> and so that was that was there was that. And then. I'm sure Pierre can agree that compression girdle is a just it's a pain in the ass. It was like I, I felt like I was what a, I would imagine a woman is pregnant, like just constant like uh, beach ball body, like just so much pressure on the abdomen and like sneezing. I, I remember I sneezed once and I thought like this is it. I just ripped all my stitches out. Uh, and going for walks, like any kind of extra like eff exerted effort, I was you know me, I don't like to sit still. Mm -hmm. And and the doctor tells me, you know, you can go walk to the kitchen and make a sandwich and bought so on and so forth. I would walk down to the beach and I would, <laughs> it was so bad. Mm -hmm. And so thankfully nothing bad happened. Um, but I listened to my body for the most part, but in terms of pain, not really, honestly, I would say at the worst, maybe a seven or an eight. Okay. It wasn't sharp or excruciating. It was just constantly uncomfortable. It was like okay. pressure. The pressure is really what it was. It was just a lot of pressure on my abdomen. And what about you, Pierre? It, it's funny to uh, say that. Like I described the pain as I didn't really feel a lot of pain. It was more a discomfort, a tightness. Because like literally, 
I because the doctor said he put in extra stitches in my tummy tuck because I worked out so much because I had such you know ab muscles built up already. He said I could tell by the way you work out if I don't put in extra stitches, you're gonna pop them, pop them, or pop the the surgery and stuff like that. So I could not stand straight for the first 10, 12 days. I think it took me like fourteen days before I could fully stand upright with yep. the surgery and the compression garment. So literally I walked around like an old man for like 90 days, year old lady. Days. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I was like, absolutely. That you know, hunched I, over Kyphos. <laughs> yeah, it was like terrible. But luckily for yeah. me, I had a, a, a beautiful recliner. And for wow. the first month and a half, I slept in that recliner and it was one of those electric ones. So the moment I sat down, I would kind of be hunched over and then I would push the button to, you know, <laughs> lift me up so that way I can sit in a, a way that my body didn't hurt. And that was like the best thing ever because if I didn't have that recliner, I would probably go stir crazy because the, the pain that, the, or I should say pain, the discomfort was so tight on my stomach that I, I thought something was going to pop, you know? Yeah, I was thankful too. Like I had friends that had it done and they're like, you're you're not going to be able to stand straight up. So make sure that you get to a position because your, your stomach is taut as can be. So make sure that you're kind of in a crunched position at all times. Um, so yeah, well, lucky you with your recliner. I'm glad that you were <laughs> so comfortable. <laughs> yeah, when you said that about the recliner in the suitcase, yeah. I'm like, oh, I knew that feeling. I'm glad I had that. Yeah, and um, something I want to add too is I, because I had really bad diastasis recti, which is basically your abdominal wall separates because I gained so much weight and you worked out your abs and you had abs. For me, I gained so much weight that my abs separated. I think that I think the doctor said it was 10 centimeters. It was he said, unlike anything he had ever seen. And so he had to stitch it back together. So it was a little different for me because of that stitching back together. I can't, I couldn't do abs until you know, almost 12, I think 12 weeks or 14. I'm just now starting to do abs again. And boy, it's, it's sore. I never realized how sore your abs could get. Wow, that's really interesting. So a lot of women experience uh, diastasis with uh, pregnancy. So I essentially was a man who had not birthed a child, but had all the trauma. Of <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. It's a girl. Um, <laughs> so was there physical therapy for either one of you? I mean, for me, I didn't have anything. Just more so, you know, you know, bugging my doctor to start hitting the gym and stuff again. Okay. And um, you know, when I work out, I wear my compression garment or I wear a binder. I wouldn't wear the full garment. I wear a, a, a tight binder around my stomach and do light exercise. And I, you know, um, like I said, the doctor just gave me full clearance to start doing a little abs, you know. Okay. Um, but there was no physical therapy. Just basically take walk. And let your body naturally, you know, stretch out again. Yeah. What about you, Mr. Physical Therapy? <laughs> it's funny. No physical therapy. But for anybody that's listening, if you have the ability to get lymphatic massages, oh my gosh, you oh. you must do it. Lymphatic drainage is everything. It allowed me, probably after 14 days, a lot of the bruising went down. I didn't post, share the photo with you, Fitz, but I looked like half of me looked like it had rotted and turned black. Like that one half of my body was so bruised. And so I had 10 lymphatic massages and, you know, down in Mexico, it was, it was so cheap. And so if you can afford it, lymphatic drainage massages are absolutely, um, I think, the key to faster recovery. And so, yes, uh, no physical therapy, but like you, I was badgering my doctor. I'm like, so can I run yet? You know, and he would, and he told me, I remember he said, you can run in four weeks after surgery. And even I was like, whoa, that seems really soon. So I didn't run until five weeks. I remember I got back to Palm Springs at about three and a half, four, and I got on a bicycle and I started cycling and that was, I was able to handle that. Okay. So and then I started running five weeks and slowly building up. And now I'm running the best in my life. And I'm running 60 miles a week for this marathon. And I feel incredible. Like, I'm so excited to see how Berlin goes. Oh, yeah, I'm going to Berlin, Germany next month and running the marathon. Oh, that's, congratulations. That's, that's, thank you. That's kind of my, um, I don't know, the way I celebrate this whole journey is I push my body <laughs> to immense pain for long distances 
you got to celebrate your body. And this is my way of doing it. Like yours is the gym. So I want to see what my body can do and we can do amazing things as you know. No, I can. And I, I did uh, lymphatic massages too. I did 10 sessions and that definitely helped me loosen up. I was like, Oh, somebody's going to rub on me. And I'm, but after each session, I felt my stomach getting looser and looser. I mean, they push it on your stomach and they rub it mm -hmm. in and they, you know, they, they, push everything towards your lymphatic nerves or drains and stuff like that. And ducks, it just made yeah. the process, process you know, lymphatic ducts. It just made everything go down. Like, like my brother, like my first two sessions, you're like, man, your stomach went down a lot just from the sessions. And then I would recommend that as well. If you can get it and afford it. Um, and like I, I did 10 sessions and it came out to like almost a thousand dollars for them. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. I just, I have to tell you, I, my, uh, in Mexico, if you do it, I had 10 lymphatic massages for 150 US dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about saving money. I want to save people as much money as I can. Now, of course, you know, make sure it's reputable as always. But if I can mm -hmm. save you money, then I, I feel good about myself. <laughs> you should have told me this before we had this call. That's right. <laughs> Go back three hey, weeks. Or... Do your research. I apparently did mine. <laughs> yeah. I, cause I, I thought about going to Mexico, but then I heard so many nightmares. You know, you hear stuff and you see these shows about going to Mexico uh, and stuff like that. And I, and I was already nervous about the surgery itself. So mm -hmm. just to think I'm going to another country, it, it, yeah. it freaked me out. And I know I, you know, it would be more money, but then I was like, well, at least I'm here and I'm in, you know, United States. And if something bad happens, I'm, I don't need to worry about flying somewhere or something like that. You know, I, I hear you. I had that fear, but I just, it, the stars aligned. And honestly, I just, I put, I, I always see the, uh, the best in people. I really try to like always see the best in anything that a person does. And so if I got botched, then that's my fault. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I had faith, you know, you just, you know, when something's right or you, you just have that good gut instinct. I, at least I, I thought I did. So. Here's an interesting question. Um, curiosity, uh, your skin, was it donated or was it discarded? I want to say, I don't know what they did. I just, I, asked the doctor. I hope they threw it away. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I don't want it. So <laughs> I don't know what they did, to be honest. I don't know if there's a process for that or if it goes to like, um, you know, I know when people get burnt, they take skin stuff and I, but I, I have no idea. And I don't know with plastic surgery if they take it or don't take it. So I wouldn't know. That's a good question. I, I have oh, no idea. Really good question. Honestly, yeah. I was kind of hoping that they I, they would slingshot it like far away into the abyss and I never see it again. <laughs> I actually asked them, I did ask them if I could, if they could put it in a jar so I could keep it on my nightstand. They didn't like that idea. You, you know, what's so funny is when I got my port out, the chemo port a couple of years ago. So they take it out and then they clean it and they, she gives it, she goes, do you want it? It's in this little container. And I just thought, no, that's disgusting. I don't want it. But then I, I said, okay, <laughs> so it's in one of my drawers. <laughs> I opened it that's up. There's funny. this little thing in there. You know what though? Like, yeah, it's like getting rid of like you know the the past, like a new body, new chapter. Yeah. But you want to keep something just to remind yourself that if like you're having a bad day, like you just want to be able to look back and be like, uh, I did it because I did this because of this. And so mm -hmm. I would have liked to have had something. Um, well, you've got something. May I remind yeah. you? You 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 have something. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, the photos for sure. Hey, I still right. can't believe that's me. So with plastic surgery, they always say, you know, you if you change your shape, you'll all often change it um, in exchange for a scar. So you both have some sizey scars. How do you expect those to be to impact you or not? I mean, for me, um, I'm OK with the scars. I've, I've been I've had several surgeries and I've always over time my skin has bounced back and you barely see any of my scars like from my gastric bypass i had six incisions in my stomach when but you can't even see them at all unless i point them out so i'm you know but once again everybody's skin is different i do use a lot of cocoa butter because i'm the cocoa butter king i lather my body you know um you know i just make sure that i always stay moisturized um the doctor did prescribe to me um 
some hydrocrozone cream and then um, like some uh, like a bleaching cream a little bit to kind of help uh, lighten some of the darker parts. But um, as long as you stay moisturized and stuff like that, eventually it's going to fade away and people are going to be too busy looking at my abs to worry about my scar. So right. What a great attitude for sure. What about you, Corey? Um, I mean, the doctor asked me like where I wear my underwear so that way this incision would be below it and for the most part um when i have shorts on i don't see it occasionally like if i'm running it might you know it might be visible but honestly i don't really care because like you said it's a celebration like if i'm gonna go with uh, having a scar for the rest of my life or having all this excess skin uh, i'll take a scar any day but the scar is getting better for sure um i would say I am almost, I'm coming up on four months post-op and uh, I'm pretty happy. It's still got some lightning to go, but you know, this is a process. The longest part of this whole thing is the scar and getting it to like, you know, disappear. So I'm too busy focused on this marathon and, and kicking butt and that to really care about anything else. Absolutely. It, yeah. It's something they- I'm sorry, Vince. I want to bring up something that some doctors always check and ask you as well, because some people have that. And sometimes people of darker skin have this problem getting keloids. Yes. Where you get have a scar surgery or like somebody get their ears pierced and their skin starts to puffy, um, start to puff up and stuff like that. And fortunate enough, once again, I don't suffer from that condition. But some people, when they have surgery, they do have that condition. And sometimes they need to go back and have like a, I know they have like keloid uh, repair and surgery to kind of fix it a little bit. Um, and where the skin like raises up and you like, you don't know how long it's going to, um, how much it's going to raise up. But if you walk around, you see people who've had scars or, um, have like, you know, they shave and they have it on the back of their neck or in their ears. That was something that, the, you know, the doctor always had to check to see if he had other surgeries, if you ever had any problems with keloids happening after the Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a rough road when you just when a scar gets worse, just your body becomes a, we're going to come, we're, we're going to call your body a big jerk, right? Yeah. <laughs> your body doesn't say, Oh, you've been through enough. <laughs> like here, let's add to the problem. Yeah. That's, I wonder if uh, science is moving in a direction where they're going to be able to help people with keloids with some sort of a j- injection or something. Do, are you familiar with that Pierre? Do they have any good stuff I- going on? I know the doctor that I had my surgery at, he does a, like, I know on his website and um, he specializes in doing some type of keloid surgery um, removal or something that he does. I'm not sure what the process is. I, I wasn't concerned with it because I know I've had other surgeries between my gunshot wounds and, um, you know, other surgeries I've had over the years, knee surgery and, and stuff like that, that I've never developed keloids and stuff. So I wasn't concerned about it or didn't really look into it, but I know he specialized in doing that. Um, and I know, it's, I want to say it's a surgical procedure, but I, I'm not hundred percent sure, but like I said, it's like, it's nothing worse than you to have a surgery, be healed up. And then your skin raises up like two, an inch or, you know, it, um, you know, some people it's worse than others. They might right. see like a, a little bit of a raise and some people you're like, oh my gosh, it's like a mini Godzilla popping out of your body because of the keloid growth and stuff like that. So I, I got to tell you, I'm still stuck on you being shot. This yeah. is, <laughs> we're going to we're gonna have to get back on and talk about that another day. That's insanity. Uh, so guys, for someone watching this, they're doing their research. They've listened to your success stories, which sounds like you both are very, very happy with your decision to have your excess skin removed. Um, what do you tell Susie Q or Joe Schmo, who's, on the fence about um, getting their excess skin removed. Corey? Just do it. Don't, don't wait. Like, don't, I waited almost 10 years after I lost the weight and kept it off. And if I could do it all over, I would have done it so much sooner because I'm just so happy and I'm in the body that I've always wanted to be in and it looks great and it it works well. And um, this has given me so much confidence. People tell me when they see me now, they're just like, I can just see something about you. You're glowing. You're just, you're just so much happier. And I'm, and I, and I was happy when I lost the weight and I had the excess skin, but my God, I love taking off my shirt now. I don't care what anybody <laughs> thinks. I don't, and I never really did care, but 
I'm, I celebrate it now every every chance I get. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it, Corey. Um, Pierre. Do it. Just do it. I'm out. Um, two things I'll say. Basically, make sure you do the surgery for yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you're not mentally or ready to do it, don't do it because of other people or do it because you're trying to impress people. Do it for yourself. Um, it's it's a big process, especially after losing weight. You, you've gone from one extreme to another extreme. And make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons, you know. And the second thing I always say is do the research, you know, in regards to whether you have it in Mexico or if you have it in the States, you know, pick a doctor based on how you interact with them. You know, ask the questions, interact with them. If they're hesitant, ask questions or they, they don't make themselves available, then, you know, you got you can look at the cost of it and say, oh, well, I don't want to go with this doctor because he's, he's $10,000 cheaper, but he's a butthole. I'm going to deal with that. And no, I rather deal with somebody who's going to be nice to me, regardless of what I pay. And you know, you want to make sure you pick someone based on your exp experience with them, their aftercare. You know, I I had a stitch, you know, was sticking out, and I'm like, oh, doc, I don't know what's going on. And, you know, they're like, oh, just come on in. And I walked in there. They walk, let me walk right in. They cut the little stitch, and boom, I walked right out. No questions asked, no hassle, no, you know, anything like that. So this. Do it for yourself. Make sure you're mentally prepared for it. And then do your research. Pick a doctor that you feel comfortable with and understand their process before and after the surgery. Thank you both. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think you helped a lot of people. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to hear the, re the response. Tomorrow, I'll start getting like, oh my gosh, I was thinking about having that. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you helped a ton. So Pierre, Corey, I love you both. And I can't wait to see you in person for real hugs soon. Yes. Okay. Um, can I say something quick? Yeah. If anybody has any questions uh, and wants to contact me, I don't know if you, if I can put in my Instagram, but I'm uh, an open book and I, I mean, I will answer any questions I can. Uh, so, I can. What is your handle, Corey? Uh, I'll type it in here if this okay. is okay. It, it's it's easy to remember. It's my big gay fitness journey. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so it's stuck with me ever since. I've got it coming up. Pierre, it's a pleasure to get to, to meet you. Um, congratulations on your journey. I'm sure, um, as you know, other people that have gone through what you've gone through totally get the emotion behind it and, and just how liberating you should feel like it's just, it's just wonderful. No, no, and I appreciate it. Now, uh, congratulations on your journey. And it's, I'm happy to, to see that there's another guy who's gone through this process because the, you know, most places it's more about women having it and you know guys don't like to talk about sensitive stuff and show any vulnerability and weakness so you know congratulations i don't know if i ever run a marathon i've done some duathlons and some other races but i don't know you, you pushed me to motivate me to you know possibly maybe a half marathon okay let me not lie I, I, I love that you, <laughs> you do whatever you feel comfortable with i mean you're you're in the gym and lifting weights i mean you can probably bench press three of me so yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's all relative to like what you're good in what you love to do. What brings well, you joy. I think you should both show up at one of my races at the same time. That'd be great. I'll be rainbow bright and you can be whatever you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be wearing like something gangster to show my muscles off and I there think you go. And pose and like <laughs> make sure everybody see me. So I'm probably going to do rainbow bright in a crop top now, like maybe a bra because, you know, I show off my midriff. I yeah, love that. There you go. Yes. <laughs> yes. At my Absolutely. race, all right? Yes, at, at your race. Only your race, yeah. At my race. Yeah. <laughs> Only Fitz gets that. That would be perfect. Uh, and you're getting... Uh, oh, Tim is in... Tim, you're in Ohio, right? He's in Cleveland. That's near you, right? Yeah, or, not too bad. It's like two hours away. Mm -hmm. he did did. You, Tim, did you run Akron a few last weekend? Just like four days ago? Hmm. Yeah, Akron mar uh, Marathon, Half Marathon was last weekend. Please tell me you ran it. That'd be so funny. I'm sure. So Tim's great. He's he's a police sergeant for Cleveland, and um, oh. he ran Coast Guard Marathon with me in March, and he PR'd. 
by like 20 yeah. minutes. 20 minutes yes. completed his goal. I, and, I love that. And then he That's came just... and ran Buffalo, which I was announcing, and he PR'd again. So just so you know, if you guys come and run my races, you're going to do great. And Tim all, all of a sudden stopped answering, which is a super bummer. But yes, Rainbow Bright, Muscle Man, Policeman, uh, and he's training for Detroit. That's close oh, to you. I'm announcing that's Michigan. Detroit. Oh, really? Yeah, Michigan's not too. I mean, Detroit, Michigan's three hours away. When October is that? October fifteenth and sixteenth. Oh, uh, it's the Columbus Marathon. Mm -hmm. I, I'll be here. I'm sorry, my love. I always do. Uh, I'll probably do the half if I even come back from Berlin by then. I haven't actually booked my flight back because I may just stay there. <laughs> we'll stay there in a crop top. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, pack your bags because I'm going to put you in my suitcase. If you're PR, if you're good luck, I need you yeah. for Berlin. <laughs> I am. Go find that German race director and tell them all about, all about me. <laughs> Will do. All right. I'm kicking you guys out. I love you both. I can't wait to see you soon. All Thank right. you for Take having care. us.